we're all going to the people so today we're going to talk about invincible issue one so it starts off you know with invincible flying it looked like he's somewhere in somewhere really cool cold because there's like snow everywhere maybe the arctic but the thing is the person he's flying with it looked like they got a bomb strapped to their chest and right now there's a timer on it and the timer is 13 seconds once invincible got him out like far out from everybody you know not near civilians or anything he just chucked him he just threw his ass right out there and all he said was well now that i've got you all to myself yeah and then he just threw him and this dude exploded you know what i mean like right it seems like right as he threw him the timer just was set to zero and it bomb just triggered so naturally the explosion you know the force from that just then sends him slamming right down to the ground so like then he becomes buried in like a decent amount of snow but he invincible and you know they're not about to kill the main character yet so he digs out and then he just jumps out and flies right off just like that so we can so we skip back to the present now so before so originally so the comic starts off they just wanted to give us a vibe of who invincible is so he actually hasn't gotten his powers yet so what happens is they skip to Mark, aka Invincible, uh, at school, and basically, like, we get introduced to his best friend. Um, his name is William, and basically, um, William William is just like, yo, um, you want to go? A group of people are going out to this spot. You know, like, you know, like after school, you about to try to go out and do something. So basically, the spot for them is called Shenanigans. So Williams is like, "Yo, do you want to go to Shenanigans?" And Mark is saying that, "Well, yo, I can't because I got work." <laughs> and Mark apparently works at a spot called Burger Mart. So you know, he did a regular um fast food type of job for a regular teenager thing. So next morning, we get introduced to Mark's family. So are basically just his mom, um Debbie Grayson. So oh yeah, Mark's last name is Mark Grayson. So Mark comes down the next morning, you know, he's saying what up to his mom and all of that. He asks his mom, though, um, which I thought was mad interesting. He asks his mom, like, yo, have you seen my dad? Dad. And, like, basically his mom is saying, like, no, because she said she hasn't seen him and that she heard that he had trouble at w trouble with work. So right off the bat, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, are they going to try to introduce, like, some cheating type of thing? You know, normally when the dude doesn't come home from work, he's cheating or whatever. But it turned out that's not the case. Anyways... So as they continue, Mark asks his mom, like, yo, can you turn on the TV? So she turns on the TV, and literally the first thing they see on the news report is that there is a dragon, basically, that is being controlled by someone and in Taiwan, and he's trying to enslave the people. But um, there's a hero fighting against him, and it turned out that this hero is actually Mark's dad, um, whose alias is Omni-Man, but real name Nolan Grayson. And... In this comic strip, they're basically, they give him an extra title. They call him Omni-Man, the Defender of Democracy. So I thought that was mad interesting. Another dope fact is that, so basically it turns out, so Omni-Man and this dragon have been fighting for 10 hours. So that basically explains why he didn't come home last night. So that was crazy. So another, you know, another interesting piece I caught too was mark's mom debbie grayson how she, she all she basically said was i hope he brings me back something from taiwan so that basically shows you like like yo she's not new to this mark himself though was mad calm too he was just eating breakfast like it's nothing so it's nothing new to see like omni man or their dad or their dad or husband in whichever case you're looking at fighting and doing anything like this so, you know what I mean? So, after breakfast, you know, sometimes the belly will be rumbling. So, Mark decides to go to the bathroom. And, basically, his mom's knocking on the door. And she's, like, she thinks he's fapping. And if you don't know what fapping is, it's basically masturbating or whatever. But, she thinks that's what he's doing. So, she makes some slight comment, like, yo, if you keep that, if you keep doing that, you're going to have a heart attack. And he's just like, yo, mom, chill. I'm just reading a comic. So, you know, so that I feel like that was a nice, like, a fun interaction. You know, you get a vibe of who the characters are. Next day, Mark's at work. You know, he's taking out the trash. He's at Burger Mart in his regular work uniform. And my boy is taking out the trash. And, like, he's about to throw the trash bag in the dumpster. And he ends up throwing in that shit to space. So, just, like, right then and there, he's just like, well... Yeah, my final, my powers are finally here. And I'm not gonna lie, I was hyped as hell for this. So, yo, we get back to the Grayson house where it's dinner time. And we see that there's a table set for three. Like, there's three chairs there. So, you know, Debbie 
Mark and hopefully Omni Man should come. So as Debbie and Mark prepare to eat, um, as Omni Man, aka Nolan Grayson, isn't at the table, um, Mark tells his mom like, "Yo, I had an interesting day." So definitely he referring to the fact that yo, my boy just found out he got superpowers, bruh. Then yo, out of nowhere, whoosh, um, Omni Man flies in and slips um in the remaining chair, and how casually Mark and Debbie reacts to this is just crazy. Cause they just like, oh, okay. Omni Man's here. I mean, Nolan's here. So then Nolan is just like, yo, he tells him like, yo, sorry to be late. And that there was an enchanted flood in Egypt he had to deal with on his way home. Debbie's just like, all right, cool. Yeah, that sounds good. And she basically informs him that like his publisher needs like is looking or waiting for another book for him. So it looks like Omni-Man's secret identity, or his n- normal person identity, what a civilian identity, is as a publisher. So he writes books and so forth. So then Mark is just like, yo, um, it's fine. Like, they asked him about his day. So he's just like, yo, it's fine. And that he's finally getting his superpowers now. But the other crazy thing is that, like, yo, all right, if my kid told me that, yo, I'd be freaking out. I'd be like, yo, we about to do some crazy shit. His mom just says, that's nice. Can you pass the potatoes? I don't know. I guess she was expecting it or something, but she was not phased by this at all. So then after this family time, we get introduced to our first villain, Titan. And guess what? He's a black character. So you already know I love him, villain or not. So Titan is a character where basically he can cover his body in a type of armor made from, it looks like, in a rock. So... He, he has some amount of superhuman strength and, like, armor. So, anyways. So, we see Titan and two men dressed in black and white. And they're running from the cops. So, that's how their scene starts up. They're running from the cops. And, basically, Titan and the two guys are arguing. Because it seems like Titan was supposed to distract the cops as the other two guys get away. However, Titan informs them that, like, yo, um, even though I have rock armor, bullets still hurt. They might bounce off, but they hurt so the guys continue running from the cops until they reach this mad large fence and one of the guys just says like so as titan is informing them why he didn't stay one of the guys one of the suit guys in the suit they're just like just get them over the fence ignoring whatever he said so titan just grabs both of them under his arms and leaps over the fence so that shows that yo he even has some amount of superhuman agility so, I don't know what the comics did this, but it bounced back again to basically after Mark is done eating with his family from the night before. And you can see him basically, so he's on the outside of his roof. And right now he's established that he has superhuman strength, but he doesn't know if he can fly. So, this is probably the dumbest thing I've seen my boy do, but he decides to jump off his parents' two-story house building. And he's betting that basically, well... If he has Trent, then he should have his father in vulnerability. So if he falls, he should be able to survive it. But he doesn't know, so he just tests it. Anyways, my boy locks out and he ends up flying. Actually, does his thing. He doesn't master it yet. Obviously, it's his first time. But he does pretty good. Yo, so then as Titan is still in the air, Mark comes out of nowhere, yo. And like, the man just slammed him. Slap him right across his face. He ends up dropping the two guys, the two guys in the suits that he's carrying. So then, Titan falls to the ground and like some Dragon Balls type of Dragon Ball Z type of thing, yo. He Mark comes down with his feet right to Titan's chest. So then Titan gets up and he's just like, yo, who are you? Like, are you trying to rob us or stop us? So then Mark doesn't even respond to this. Mark responds with him fist them. So Mark gave him one slap, one punch basically, and breaks away most of Titan's armor. Sends him flying right through the air. Later on, you know, Omniman, aka Nolan, shows up and basically he's just laughing at Mark because, well, his costume is lame. But you gotta give him credit, you know what I mean? Like, he really did do make this costume himself, you know. It looked like he just got some shit out of his closet and just put it together. But eventually, um, Nolan is just like, yo, um, I'm gonna help you out with this. I'm gonna bring it to my guy and then we get introduced to art. So Art Rosenbaum, uh, that's his full name, is basically a superhero tailor. And this is the guy every superhero in the Invincible Universe goes to if you want to get a proper uniform, a proper suit. Art suggests a 
costume for Mart, but you could tell that Mart doesn't really like it. It's more so like an orange and yellow costume with some disc on it. Mark even responds, based, direct, his direct quote is basically like, I don't know about this orange and yellow. I mean, it sings, but I I don't think it's just, it's not singing the tune for me. Um, he's just trying to be fancy, just saying he don't like the costume. But an interesting thing about this costume, which Art mentions, is that the discs that were on this, um, I guess they were solar powered. So he mentions that he thought, initially when he designed this costume, he thought Omniman's powers were solar powered. So the disc would have worked um, to help improve that. So I think that's like a nice little jab, like a little jab at Superman. You know, they're trying to... Because Superman, as you know, is most of his power. A lot of his power comes from the sun. Omni-Man ends up having to leave because of an emergency that came up. But during that time, Art and, you know, Mark, they end up chopping it up and talking. And he asks him like, yo, do you have a superhero name? And Mark doesn't have one. So... Art suggests that, like, yo, Mark, the art, art suggests that Mark comes back after, you know, he figures out a name that he wants to use. And then, like, then Art can, like, you know, develop an actual suit which fits that name or so. The next day, Mark returns to school. Um, now he has powers, though. So, anyways, he is actually by his locker and he hears some bully basically bothering another student. So, the student's name is Steve White. And you can hear Steve just saying, like, you know, he's a smaller kid and he's a black kid. So, you know, I'm going to give him props, too, even though he's a side character. But the so Steve is just like, yo, leave me alone to the bully. And the bully is just ignoring him, you know, typical annoying bullies or whatever you want to call it. And Mark decides to step in and he says, hey, man, why don't you listen to the guy and just leave him alone? What are you trying to prove? And so just like that, the bully decides to take his anger out on Mark and he pushes Mark, and Mark basically turned this guy around and slammed him, basically breaking in the locker, everything, and like everybody's just looking at him like, yo, what just happened? Because like, they've never seen Mark do anything like this, so this trend is like surprising to everybody. So anyways, they cut back to class, Um, the period's done, and actually, it's a lunch lady that breaks up that fight before Mark beat his ass. So they cut back to class and Mark is in his first, um, in class now it looked like there's a test actually going on, but it seemed like they got a pretty chill professor cause look, what happens is that he basically tells them, he sees all of them struggling and he tells them, yo, you can just take this work home and finish it on your own. And you know, we, uh, we've all had that in school and I like that shit. So I'm sure they heard the rest of them liked it too. So, but the interesting thing is, though, um, so one of the jocks, they even heard this and they were just like, yo, he's not going to do the homework, even though he's getting the chance to do the shit at, at home. He decides he's not going to do this. So it looks like the professor hears this and he asks this jock to stay back that um, he just want to talk to him. So anyways, you know, Mark um, leaves class and he ends up having to go to the principal office um, pretty much to discuss what happened with the bully earlier. Mark later gets to the principal's office and he explains that he just doesn't like seeing people being picked on. That's why he stood up for Steve um, against the bully. The principal commends Mark and tells him that like he's glad that he's standing up. But he recommends that he seeks, goes for a teacher next time instead of doing this. Especially when the bully is twice Mark's size. He then says to Mark, remember, you're not invincible. And trust me, like, when you see the look on Mark's face, you could tell that, like, he was just like, yeah, this is the name. This is the name I want. And so basically, after he gets done talking with the principal, he shoots over to Art. They don't show um this in the comics, but you could guess that, well, that's pretty much where he goes, especially with the next scene coming up. Later in the day, we see a group of armed men um go inside a bank and they're robbing it. They have all the civilians and employees on the ground um, restrained and so forth. And you see them actually warning the civilians like, don't do anything stupid and we won't harm you in any way. They soon get a uh, tip that the, cops, that the cops are on their way. So they rush out the bank and run towards their getaway vehicle. When they step out, they're greeted by Mark, a.k.a. Invincible, and he's dressed in his official costume. And, yo, when I tell you, this, it, it, it's, it's just hard. The costume is lit. It's blue, yellow, and black, and it's just, it's lit. So he got the glasses on, he has the glasses on, and he's wearing the Invincible costume. 
and the men they decide to threaten mark by saying drop it freak or we blow you away and my boy mark all he says is i wouldn't try that i'm invincible and i'm not gonna lie that that, that little i'm invincible part was kind of corny but i'm gonna make it slide because this is a dope comic and i really enjoyed it but if you like it you know definitely stay tuned subscribe and check it out